Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's tutorial, what I want to do is I want to go through five different examples of what I would call code simplification within Python. So what I'm going to walk you through is a couple of examples in cases where we would be writing code and in, in certain cases we'll be writing three to four or five or maybe even ten lines of code but really all of that can be simplified in one line of code. So today's tutorial is really about one-liners. Now to kick us off, I'm going to go from what I would say somewhat easy to all the way something that's a little bit more harder to understand. But for the most part, we're going to go through all the different concepts and you guys should be fine at the end of this. So we're going to start off our first example with defining a list. And what the objective what I want to do in this case is I want to be able to pull apart all the animals here that are either greater than or equal to four characters. So in a scenario like this, cat is three, dog is three, pig is three. So those won't qualify, but horse, elephant, and monkey should. So what I'm saying is, is I've got my list defined as animals here, and I want to iterate through my list, so I'm going to say for animal in animals, if the length of every single component that I pull out of this, so the first loop is going to go through cat, and it's going to say if it's greater or equal to four, then add it to my new list here called animal underscore list. Otherwise, don't do anything with it. And so it's going to go through each one of these and do this calculation. So when I hit print by it, it's going to give me horse, elephant, and monkey. Now, if I go ahead and change this to three, for example, it's still going to give me the same thing because this is greater than three. I need something that's three or more. So if I go two, it should give me the entire list. And then if I go the other extreme and I say something like six, it should really only return elephant. All right, well, it's great the, the fact that we can get this to work, but how would I do this in one line of code? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to scroll down here and pull this line up. And this line essentially replaces those three lines above there. And so let's go through what this is saying. So what this is saying is create a new list, just like here. And I'll come back to this first animal in a second. But it's saying do the iteration of animal in animals if the length of animal is greater than four in this case, then take this animal and append it to animal list. So essentially the way a list comprehension works is you'll do your for loop over here, then it'll take your if condition over here, and then the variable that you actually want to pass back is going to be the first variable in your, in your list comprehension here. So in this case, every single time this is going to be greater than four, the length of animal is going to be greater than four, it's going to append to this list. So let's see if we get the same results. If I go ahead and hit print, we're going to get horse, elephant, monkey. If I change this to two, we should get everything, which we do. And if I change this to six, we should just get elephant just like the first one. All right, so it sounds like this works. So this is one example of shortening your code and making things a lot more efficient. And so this method here is called list comprehension. So the next one that I'm going to go through is a similar method. However, we're going to be working with dictionaries instead of lists in this case. So I've defined a dictionary and I've called it colors and I've used the same animals, cat, dog, pig, horse, elephant, and monkey, and its corresponding color. So I said, this is a gray cat, white dog, pink pig, and so forth. Now, when you're going to be iterating through a dictionary, the convention is slightly different because dictionaries work on something called a key and a value pair. You're going to say for key and value in colors, which is a dictionary name here. And then you always have to add items when you're doing some kind of a, a for loop with dictionaries. That's just, this just tells the dictionary or the for loop to iterate through a dictionary. Then we're going to say if V, which is the value, the second component here is equal to gray, then append that to new colors. So very similar to the first one, except we're dealing with multi variables here. And then we're going to go ahead and print the new color. So when I go ahead and print this, it's going to give me cat, horse, elephant because I've defined gray. But what happens if I move this to pink? Well, now it's going to give me pig. And that's what we want it to do. So we know that it's working from that perspective as well. So again, very similarly, I can go ahead and pull my one liner here, which is almost near identical to the first one, except we're dealing with a dictionary here. So we're going to start again with our for loop here for kv and color dot items, which is identical to this line up here. Then we're going to have our conditional if v is equal to gray. But the only thing that I'm asking to return back now 
I just want to know the animal, which is K. So we're, we're doing the same thing here. We actually did do the same thing here. I kind of missed it. But instead of writing this entire statement on new colors out of pen K, that's kind of what this convention means here. So return K in this loop in scenarios where V is equal to gray. Okay, so when we do this, we should get cat, horse, elephant. And if I change this to pink, I'm going to get back pig. All right, so this is another version of this comprehension, but this time dealing with dictionaries, whereas in the first scenario, we're dealing with lists, okay? So now we're going to go to our third example of one-liners. Now, in this case, I've defined a couple of names in here, and I said, what I want to do is I want us to go ahead and input some kind of a name, and I want this function here, or this thing here, to check to see whether or not the name that we input is in this list. If it is, print yes. Otherwise, print no. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So if I entered Maya, it says yes, because Maya is listed right there. Now let's run this again. And if I say Mark, it's gonna say no, because Mark is not within this list. Now again, to do the one-liner here, it's very straightforward. And I actually use this method quite a bit more than doing the conventional method above. And in this, all we're doing is we're saying, we're just gonna default to say printing yes, assuming if the name is in the name, if, sorry, the name that we've entered here, which is check names, belongs to the list of names, otherwise just print no. So again, if I go ahead and run this, and I do Maya, it says yes. And if I do Mark, it says no. Okay, so a great another example of doing one-liners. We're now going to move over to our fourth sample, which is a function. So what I want to do in this case is I want to take this list of numbers that I put in. One, two, three, four, five. I want to take that number. I want to square it, which is denoted by the double star here. And I want to add five to it. And then I want to return this list with this new calculation. So let me give you an example of what this looks like. So when I go ahead and print this, what it's doing is it's taking one to the power of two, which is two plus five, which is six. And the second one, it's doing two to the power of four, which is four plus five is nine. Now what I'm about to show you is how to do this with the Lambda function. And a Lambda function is a great function to use in scenarios where you're not gonna be using the function that you define over and over again several times. And so if it's it's more of just a one and done kind of a thing. And if you go to my mastering Python tutorials, I actually have a complete section dedicated to Lambda function. So if you want, please go ahead and check that out. So how would I go ahead and do this? So I'm gonna go down here and print my Lambda function or pull my Lambda function. I will comment out all of this. And actually I can get rid of this too. So I'm getting rid of even more lines here. So that's five lines I'm getting rid of essentially. And what this is saying is it's saying, pass in my list, which is numbers. To that, I'm going to be taking lambda x. So lambda is my, the function that I'm going to be using. x is the variable that I'm going to be using. And this is what I want you to do with x. I want you to take x, square it, and then add 5, just like we did above here. And so when I run this, it actually gives me the exact same output. And so the reason why we have to wrap this all in a list at the end is so that we can print it. Because if I don't print this, it's gonna return back a map object and it's not gonna know what we're talking about. So another great example of replacing one, two, three, four, plus the fifth line we deleted with just one line of code. And then the last one that we're gonna do, this one is actually a little bit more fun. So the exercise or the challenge that I wanna do here is I wanna take a phrase and see whether it's a, whether it's a palindrome. What a palindrome is, is it's a, word or a phrase that if reversed backwards actually spells the exact same thing. So when you look at something like Anna, if I go A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, that's the same as going backwards A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. And so you want to check to see whether or not this is a palindrome. So I thought to myself, how would I write this the old conventional way, especially if I was new to Python? Well, the, probably the easiest way to do this is to break this up into individual characters and then actually just go backwards and append it and stitch it back together. So that's what I've done. I've defined a, and I'll come back to this line in a second. This line's actually very critical, especially when we're gonna be doing phrases, but I'll come back to that in a second. So what I said is I wanna have a new phrase, which is what I wanna have my reverse word in. 
I want to know overall how many or how long is this phrase. So this is going to say that this is four. And the reason why I have minus one is that if you know in Python, your counts always start from zero, not from one. So in this case, I want, if I have four characters and my length is four, I want to go zero, one, two, three, which is why I want my count to start at three. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this line of code. I actually don't need it. That was, I think, when I was just testing things out. But anyways, so now that I have that, so I wrote a while statement and I said, while my count is greater than minus one, because remember, I need my count variable to go all the way down to zero, zero, one, two, three. So I said, as long as it's greater than negative one, take your new phrase and append this phrase here. So whatever I break this up into. So the first time this is going to go through the loop is it's going to say, okay, the number that I'm looking for is three. The index value that I've defined is three. So it's going to say phrase three, and it's going to go zero, one, two, three. Okay. So that gives me my a over here. I'm going to decrement my count and I'm going to say append my a to the new phrase. So that's what goes to now the front of this list. And as I go down this list now, it will continue to do that until I get down to zero. And finally, when I get down to zero, it's going to take this last day and it's going to append it to the end of this new list, which is new phrase. Then I do a conditional and I say, if my original phrase, which is Anna is equal to, and the reason why I have the join condition here is when you have a list, this would output as something like this. It'll go a, N, N, A. And I need to join that to make a sentence out of it. So this is why you use this join condition to make a string out of it. And then you say, all right, does this string equal to the original string, which is Anna? Print yes, otherwise print no. All right, so let's go back to this first condition that I was talking about. So one of the things I needed to add was this lower command because I want to take my phrase and I want to make sure everything's in lowercase. And here's what happens when I don't do that. So when I take out the lower, it's going to go ahead and compare it and it's going to say this is not a palindrome because this A is a capital A and this A is a small A. This is why you need to lowercase everything. Okay, and so now this is saying it's a yes. Now I'm going to come back and explain this when we're going to have a little bit of fun with some of the phrases that we're going to look at because it's going to make a lot more sense then otherwise it's not going to make a whole lot of sense right now for you. So now that's what it does to see whether or not this is a palindrome. So let's try another word. Let's try Bob. Bob we know is going to be a palindrome, yes. But if I try Bob A, that's not a palindrome. If I add an A in front of this, it is a palindrome. So again, it's just going to go forward and back to see whether or not the word spells the same thing, forward and back. And in a palindrome, it's not necessary that it has to be a word. It could even be whether or not, really what it means is whether or not my, my letters are arranged in the same order going forward and going back. And we're going to experiment with that now as I look into the phrase. So what I want to do is I, I want to go ahead and look at a phrase here, which is a nut for a jar of tacos. And so the reason why now I can explain why I did phrase.replace is because I needed to replace all of these spaces here with nothing. So I really just wanted this to be one big word so I can see whether or not the letters going this way and the letters going this way are the same or not. So when I go ahead and print this, well, it's gonna say it's not a palindrome because you know A-N-U-T is not the same as S-O-C-A-T. But what if I change this to tuna? Now it's saying it is a palindrome because I can say a nut for a jar of tuna. So this is actually considered a palindrome because it has the same letter configuration forward and it has the same letter configuration going back. And so here's another example of it. You know, was it a car or a cat? I saw. And again, that's another palindrome as well. So you probably saw my code here, but this is the one liner that you would use to do the exact same thing. And I'm going to explain what this does as I go ahead and edit all this code out. So this is a good example where I'm going to be taking out quite a bit of code, actually. Probably all of this, actually. So one line even higher. I can go ahead and comment out all of this. 
And so when you're thinking when you're developing code and if you if you have the ability to go and take all of that out and just replace it with this one line, that's kind of cool. All right, so let's go ahead and check whether or not this was a palindrome. So let's go back to our base example, Anna. Okay, it's gonna say yes. If I add a B here, it's gonna say no. And if I add a B here, it should say yes. Cool? All right, so now let's go ahead and take some of these and then I'll explain it after that how this code actually does all of this cool stuff with just that one line. So, a nut for a jar of tacos, nope. But a nut for a jar of tuna, yes, it does work. And then, last but not least, this version right here. And again, that's a palindrome. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of this stuff out for now. And you probably could have wrote this in a different way. You probably could have used a for loop as well. I just, you know, quickly came up with whatever made sense. But even still, I can guarantee you're not gonna come up with one line by doing this otherwise. All right, so now that I'm looking at this, it's saying, and we're using the same convention that we used in the small if one here, where we're using this convention here. But if I go back here and I say print yes if phrase is equal to phrase, and I'm gonna explain what this is in a second, else print no. So very straightforward. Now the way list slicing works is a list slice works as follows. So when I have any kind of a list, the first is gonna be my starting point. My second is gonna be my ending point. And then my third is gonna be my step function. And what that means is if I wanted to skip every one or two items in the list, I can do that by defining steps. So if I said something like, so if I had a list like one, two, three, four, five, and I define my step function to be two, it'll pull one, three, and five. If I define my step function to be three, it'll pull one and four only or two and five only because that's the way the step function works. Now, the minute I go ahead and add in a negative one, it's actually gonna start working backwards. And so in a scenario like this, because I haven't defined my start or ending point, it's gonna say, all right, I'm gonna take this entire phrase no matter how long it is. I don't care how long it is, I'm gonna take everything. But now, I'm actually gonna return back everything in reverse because I've defined this as minus one. And as a result, you start getting an idea of whether or not this is gonna be a palindrome or not because that's what it's doing. It's reading it forward, but then when you define this, it's actually reading it backwards. And that's exactly what you want to do in the case of a palindrome. So that's how the step function works. Again, in my Python tutorial, if you go ahead and look at it, link in description, I actually have a section on lists as well that you can go and understand that a little bit more as well. But guys, that was kind of the end of this video. I just wanted to share some tips and tricks on how to do some really efficient coding. And this was really about how to take your code, make it more efficient, and actually make it down into one line of code. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.